Welcome. 2018 is shaping up to be a very interesting year from the point of view of Star Watchers. So let's get out your calendars and mark down some of the events that might be of interest to you. We'll start on January 1st with Mercury at its maximum western elongation. That means it's its maximum distance to the west of the Sun and so will appear as a morning star about half an hour before sunrise. Now I've only seen Mercury twice once as an evening star and once during a transit of the Sun and I'm not sure the transit counts because you're not seeing Mercury directly you're just seeing its silhouette. Anyway you have three more opportunities to see Mercury as a morning star on the 29th of April, the 26th of August and the 6th of November. On the 3rd of January the Earth is at its closest approach to the Sun so called perihelion. At that time it'll be just over 91 million miles away from the Sun or about 147 million kilometers. Because it's closest to the Sun it receives about 7% more uh, energy than when it's at its furthest point from the Sun. So there's this anomaly that during one of the coldest days of the year uh, in the northern hemisphere we're actually getting more heat from the Sun than we normally do in the middle of our summer. This makes the northern hemisphere winters less severe and the northern hemisphere summers less hot. Uh, and of course the reverse for the Southern Hemisphere. On the night of the 3rd and 4th of January we have the peak of the quadranted meteor shower. It produces between 30 and 40 meteors per hour. Looking north the radiant point, the point from which all the meteors seem to originate, is just below and to the left of the handle of the Big Dipper. Unfortunately this year it is spoiled by the presence of the full moon. On the 31st of January 2018 we have a supermoon. That means the moon is at its closest approach to the Earth and so appears much larger than usual. It is also a blue moon which means it's the second moon in a given month. But that's not all. On that same day we're going to have a total eclipse of the moon. This eclipse is unfavorable for Western Europe, Africa and South America but the rest of the world will see some part of this eclipse. Now lunar eclipses come in several stages and here they are. On the far right P1 is the beginning of the penumbral phase when the moon will start to darken. U1 is the beginning of the umbral phase when the moon starts to slide into the heart of the Earth's shadow. U2 is the beginning of totality that means the whole of the moon is in the Earth's shadow. U3 is the end of totality. U4 is the end of the umbral phase and P4 is the end of the penumbral phase. On the 15th of February we're going to have a partial solar eclipse. Unfortunately it's uh, only really visible from Antarctica and South America and the, the South American part is less than 40 percent so you're really going to have to be living at the South Pole Station or be a penguin to really appreciate this particular eclipse. On the 15th of March 2018 we're going to have Mercury uh, at its greatest western elongation. That means it will be an evening star. And this is going to be repeated on the 12th of July and the 15th of December. On the 20th of March 2018 we'll be having the vernal equinox. So the Sun moves north of the equator. The length of the day equals the length of the night. And is the start of northern hemisphere spring and of course the start of the Southern Hemisphere autumn. On the 31st of March 2018 we're going to have a second blue moon. On the nights of the 22nd and 23rd of April we'll have the peak of the Lyrid meteor shower. They produce about 20 meteors per hour but they tend to be bright meteors with long-lasting dust tails. The radiant point is just to the right of the bright star Vega. There is no moon this year so it should be a good opportunity to see some meteors. We're not going to be so lucky with the Eta Aquarid meteor shower. Although it produces 60 meteors per hour, the moon will interfere this year. So it's not probably a good opportunity to see very many meteors. On the 9th of May, Jupiter will be in opposition to the Earth, so it's at its closest approach, which is the best time to observe its four great moons, Eo, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, and also the cloud bands on the surface of the planet. On the 21st of June 2018, it's the summer solstice. So the Sun has reached its greatest northern latitude and it's the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere and the beginning of official northern hemisphere summer. 
Equally, it's the shortest day of the year in the Southern Hemisphere and the beginning of their winter. On the 27th of June, Saturn is in opposition. It's the closest approach to the Earth, so it's the best time to see its beautiful ring system and some of its moons. On the 6th of July, Earth will be at Apelion, its furthest distance from the Sun. That means it'll be 94.5 million miles away from the uh, Sun, and so uh, it'll be getting 7% less radiation than it did in January. On the 13th of July, we're going to have another partial eclipse of the Sun. Unfortunately, it's not very favorable again. It's only going to be about a 30% eclipse, and then it's not going to be visible from very many land areas. Tasmania in the southern tip of New Zealand and the northernmost extent of Antarctica. On the 27th of July, we're going to see another total eclipse of the Moon. This one will be visible from just about everywhere except North America, with the best of the viewing from Europe through to China. On the 27th of July, Mars will be at opposition. That means it is at its closest approach to the Earth. So it's the best time to observe the planet and its polar caps. On the 28th and 29th of July, we're going to have the peak of the Delta Aquid meteor shower. It has two radiant points because it originates from two co different comets. Uh, they are both above the star Formalholt. You can get up to 20 meteors per hour from this shower. However, the full moon will interfere yet again. On the 11th of August, we're going to have a second partial solar eclipse. This one will be visible from Northern Europe and Asia. At maximum, it's only going to be a 73% eclipse. On the 12th and 13th of August, you're going to get the peak of the Perseid meteor shower. That can get up to 60 meteors per hour, and some are very bright. And there's no moon to interfere, so this is going to be a very good opportunity to see some very nice meteors. The radiant point is just above and to the left of the constellation of Perseus. On the 7th of September, Neptune will be at opposition. That means it is at its closest approach to Earth. So it will be the best chance to see it. It will be an eighth magnitude object, so you need a fairly good telescope and some good star charts to be able to distinguish what is a normal star and the planet. On the 23rd of September is the autumnal equinox. The sun will be slipping south of the equator. The length of the day will equal the length of the night and it will be the beginning of astronomical autumn in the Northern Hemisphere and spring in the Southern Hemisphere. On the nights of the 21st and 22nd of October 2018, it will be the Orionid meteor shower. We should get up to 20 meteors per hour. However, once again, we're going to be unlucky and the moon will interfere. On the 23rd of October, Uranus will be in opposition. So it's the best chance to see it. It will be about a sixth magnitude object so you will need a telescope or a good pair of binoculars, but most importantly you'll need a star chart so you can find the exact position of it in the sky. On the 13th and 14th of December 2018 we will have the Geminid meteor shower. This can have up to 120 meteors per hour. Some of them show bright colors in their uh, tails and there's no moon to interfere so this is really our best opportunity of 2018 to see lots of good meteors. In 2018, let's not forget the Sun, you can observe that all the year through. However, we will be approaching solar minimum during 2018, which could go on for a year or two. During that time, sunspots will be quite rare, and we will go many weeks without any spots at all on the Sun. However, one of the things you can start to do is look for small spot groups at very high latitudes, because that will be the beginning of Solar Cycle 25. One quick word about solar viewing safety. Never ever look directly at the sun, even with sunglasses on. Certainly never look through a telescope or use binoculars to look at the sun. It will damage your eyes permanently. If you are going to use a telescope, use one with a full aperture solar filter like the one shown here. Let's not forget about aurora. Those of you at high latitude should see quite a few aurora during this period, even though there are fewer coronal mass ejections and flares. The main origin of these will be high-speed solar wind uh, streams coming from the quiet sun. One of the neat things about amateur astronomy is you can expect the unexpected. Perhaps there will be a bright comet coming through the solar system during this year. You can always have the chance of seeing a fireball. I saw one earlier this year. It was really spectacular. 
even though we're approaching solar minimum, there's always the chance of a flare or a coronal mass ejection. Also of interest to space buffs are spacecraft launches. Unfortunately, they tend to be rather unpredictable as the schedules change, so I've not included any here, but keep an eye on the schedules for NASA, NOAA, um, Japan, J Russia, and China. If you're looking at the stars next year, may your skies be clear and the clouds stay away. Until next time, goodbye.